What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can use the new content packs inside of the SketchUp Extension Warehouse to add materials and other assets to our libraries in SketchUp. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you an extension you absolutely need for working with the materials and a workflow for using these materials without bloating your SketchUp files with massive size images. So you're gonna to wanna to hear both of those, so make sure you stick around to the end. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna use the C plus townhouse model from G and H in the 3D warehouse in order to do this. Now remember that we're working with SketchUp 2025. And so with SketchUp 2025, we now have the photo real materials um, enabled inside of SketchUp as well as our environments. So if I toggle our environment on right here, it's gonna pop up a little window and we're gonna say, okay. And that's going to add the environment in the background to light the scene just like this. And remember that they've changed the SketchUp material library so that it looks more like this and you can access PBR materials. And so let's say for example, that we wanted to add some brick to this wall. Well, if we add brick to this wall, remember that this brick is going to have those PBR materials associated with it. It's got normals, which you can use to make things look bumpier. You can adjust the roughness if you want things to reflect, which we don't. And so the materials built into this version look really good, right? If we were to come in here and look at the wood materials, for example, you've got things like wood veneer. So if we were to apply a wood veneer to this wall right here, it's going to apply that wood just like this. So we've got some good looking PBR materials contained inside of the library. However, if we want more, there's actually a way to access a ton of free materials inside of the 3D warehouse. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the materials section of our tray, and there's a button right here for launch 3D warehouse. Now, when you do that, what that does is that goes into the library of a SketchUp content library user. This is basically where SketchUp is keeping their content library. Now, if you click in here, notice how there's a ton of different materials that are pre-made and ready for you to bring into SketchUp. So what we can do is we can either click on this button right here to bring that entire collection in, or if you click on the collection, notice how each one of these materials individually is going to show up in a list as well, just like this. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add a wood planks material. So maybe this one right here, if you were to click on the download button right here for wood planks, notice how that's going to show up as the active material with your paint bucket tool right here. So I can apply that wood planks material to these surfaces, just like this. And so note that this is going to come in with those different maps loaded in, right? So we've got our normals, we've got our ambient occlusion, which is going to highlight the darks in the area. All of those are going to be associated with that material right here. Now, say that you wanted all of those wood materials what you can do is you can just click on the download button right here in order to download all of the wood materials into your SketchUp model. So notice how that's going to take a while. This may not be the way that I want to go about this necessarily, um, just because it's gonna bring in a bunch of stuff that's going to sit inside of your active model file. Notice how those are all gonna show up in your in model. And so the only thing I don't like about this is they're brought in here based on the wood right here. So they have the word wood in here and you can find those different materials. However, they're not really like organized, right? And actually notice how if you move inside of the model, it's going to give you a series of swatches that you can drop in the model. I actually almost prefer having that in here. So you can just sample those different wood materials, but they're also in the wood section right here. But say that we wanted to add maybe some wood paneling or something like that. You can just sample one of these wood materials and apply it to surfaces inside of your SketchUp model like this. Now having this series of swatches is interesting because it allows us to get around that purge unused notification. Remember that if we delete this out, now we've got a bunch of materials that are in our in model that aren't actually applied to anything on a surface. Well, now if we do a file save, we're gonna get this notification to purge unused. Well, if we click on yes, that's gonna remove all of the wood materials that are in your model right here that aren't actively 
being used. And notice how it's taking SketchUp a second to do that because it's actually moving around a bunch of data in the background because you're getting rid of all that. But notice how now we have way less materials in our model. So all of those wood materials that we downloaded are no longer in here. So if you want to keep those wood materials in your library, having that series of swatches that comes with that um, could actually be a very good thing. Now, let's say that we wanted to just bring down an in, um, a singular material. So let's go back into the 3D warehouse and let's say we wanted to bring in like a stone or a brick. So we'll go to the brick collection right here. So I'm going to pick a brick material right here. I'm going to bring that down in my SketchUp model like this. Well, now I can apply that to this surface and it's active inside of the model. And remember, because it's applied to a surface in SketchUp, it's not going to get removed whenever we do our purge unused. So when we do a purge, which it's not popping up that window right now, but when we do a purge, um, as long as this is applied to something in the model, it's going to keep it. And so in this case, we would probably adjust the normal down just a tad because it's looking a little too shiny. So we can bump that normal down a little bit like this. but You've got that entire collection of materials that you can bring down from the 3D warehouse. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you two tips that are gonna be lifesavers for you as you're trying to start working with this PBR materials. The first is you need to go into the extension warehouse and you need to download the material replacer extension from TomTom. What that's going to do is that's gonna allow you to replace all instances of a material with another material inside of your SketchUp model. Note that you also need to download TomTom's library extension and install that. You probably need to do that first. But once you install and enable material replacer, what it's going to do is it's going to let you replace all instances of a material with another material that's in your model. And so a lot of the time what you're going to end up doing is just drawing a little box in your 3D space like this so that you can apply a material to it. But all of the materials that are in here right now don't really have any of the PBR associated with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this new basic glass to this surface right here. But then I'm going to use the extension material replacer, which shows up under tools, material replacer. And notice how I can select a material like this, replace it with this basic glass. And everywhere that exists in your SketchUp model um, is now going to be replaced with this basic glass. Well, I can adjust the opacity of that glass right here so that we get better reflections off of that surface. So another example would be this wood veneer, right? I don't really like this old wood veneer that's low resolution. Well, I'm just going to replace it with this new wood veneer that we have in our model. Notice how that all got replaced with that new wood veneer material, which looks a lot better. So you're going to do a lot of replacing of materials using material replacer right now. I hope someday they'll have like a built-in tool for this, but let's say for example, that we wanted to use this metal material. Well, I would just apply it to this surface. I would use tools material replacer in order to swap this out and I'd replace it with this metal material right here. And then when I hit the space key, notice how that's going to be replaced. Well, then I could edit that material and colorize it so I can make it dark again. But this has metalness and you can also adjust the roughness down so that you get reflections on the surface with this metal. So you can use that in order to really quickly swap out those different materials in order to start getting reflections. Okay, and so one other trick that you can use if you want to save a bunch of these is you can actually, when you're doing the download of the SketchUp materials, right? So if I go in here and I go to collections, I go to materials and I click on, let's call it the tile collection right here. You click on download. If you say no to load this directly into your SketchUp model, this will let you save this onto your hard drive. So we'll save tiles right here. Well, then if you open that in SketchUp 2025, like this, and you might've noticed this is a pretty large file, which is why we do the purging unused so much that we don't have all this extra stuff. But notice how this is a SketchUp model file that only has the materials um, in the in model section that are actually from this collection right here. So what you can do is you can take these, you can right click, you can do a save as, and you can start saving those materials into that folder. And so usually the way I'd recommend this is you would want to copy this. We're going to go ahead and do a save. And then when you do a save as, 
Notice how I'm able to save these different materials individually. Now, I thought there was an extension that could batch this, but I'm not finding it right now. So I'm kind of having to go through and do this manually, which is fine. I mean, notice how it's going really quickly. But what you can do is you can save these all to a folder and they're much smaller with the individual files right here, like they're five megs each as opposed to a hundred megabyte um, SketchUp file. But when you save them all to the folder, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to then access that in the future. So I'm just going to go through this second line right here. And then when we're done with that, we can hop back over into this other SketchUp file. Well, remember you have the ability to open your own folders or collections. So if we click on open right here, and we go find that file and we select the folder those SKM files were in. Notice how you can access all of those different tile materials just like this. So now if I wanted to apply this to say the wall or something like that, I've got those individual tiles in here that I can start applying to the walls. And that way they're not actually sitting in your model, like slowing everything down, right? Like there's a ton of materials in here, but you don't have all of those tiles in here. This is referencing those as an external folder right here that you can access later. So that's really kind of what I would recommend is if you have a bunch of these, save them as their own individual SKM files. Notice how those SKM files do get saved with those roughness and normal maps and all of that, but then you can just access them as an external library directly in the material editor. All right, so that's kind of a run through of how you can use the content libraries for SketchUp from the 3D warehouse. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or if you can remember what that tool was that batch saves materials. Leave that in the comments down below as well. Even if there is one, I don't know if they're quite set up yet to do a batch save with the actual material maps. But if you can remember, leave a comment down below and let me know. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.